Hi, this is Ed Driscoll. Welcome to Silicon Graffiti, coming to you this week from Space Station 5 in geosynchronous orbit high above my garage in Northern California. It's the only place I could find high enough to avoid being buzzed by Air Force One. It's also the perfect place to discuss Plan B from outer space. As the Associated Press noted in April, John Holdren, quote, the president's new science advisor, said that global warming is so dire the Obama administration is discussing radical technologies to cool the Earth's air. One such extreme option includes shooting pollution particles into the upper atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays, the Associated Press notes, adding, quote, Holdren said an experimental measure would only be used as a last resort, unquote. A classic example is uh, injecting reflecting particles into Earth orbit that would uh, deflect some of the sunlight that would otherwise be warming the Earth, and in that way try to produce a cooling effect to offset the heating effect of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. As blogger Jim Treacher quipped immediately afterwards on Twitter, that whole Obama is a megalomaniac thing is such a ridiculous right-wing smear. By the way, now he wants to take over the weather. But then Holdren's peculiar pollution particle plan is just one of several ideas scientists are kicking around to stop global warming. A January article in England's Independent claimed that, quote, an emergency plan B is needed to save the world from dangerous climate change, according to a poll of leading scientists by the Independent. Tim Blair of Australia's Daily Telegraph appropriately dubbed the article Plan B from Outer Space. Among the proposals discussed, in addition to Holdren's particle scheme, include creating low clouds over the seas by pumping water vapor into the air to stimulate cloud formation over the seas, fertilizing the seas with iron filings, mixing the deep water of the ocean to absorb more CO2. Giant mirrors in space was also discussed in January by the Independent. And back in 2007, deploying giant umbrellas in space to block sunlight was proposed by a University of Arizona astronomer. Those last two items are very much reminiscent of an anecdote from Arthur C. Clarke's classic Profiles of the Future. Clarke wrote that, quote, the idea of orbiting mirrors was suggested by Hermann Oberth as early as 1925. He pointed out that reflectors miles wide could be made from very small amounts of material such as metallic sodium. Today, a luminized miler would be a good candidate. Something like this might have even happened back in the 1960s. There was a time when the Pentagon seriously considered abolishing night in Vietnam. Only a few Saturn V's, it was calculated, would be necessary to do the job, Clark added. If the idea of orbiting mirrors over Vietnam sounded extreme 40 years ago, imagine how a proposal to shoot pollutants into the upper atmosphere seems today. As London's Telegraph noted at the end of last year, quote, 2008 was the year that any pretense that there was a scientific consensus in favor of man-made global warming collapsed. And this past April, a survey by the Rasmussen Group found that just 34% of American voters now believe that global warming is caused by human activity, the lowest finding yet in a Rasmussen poll. However, 48% of the political class believe humans are to blame. Which may explain why editor and publisher, the house organ for the newspaper industry, ran an essay in 2007 titled, quote, Climate Change, Get Over Objectivity Newspapers, unquote. Of course, as their coverage of the 2008 presidential campaign reminds us, newspapers have gotten over objectivity in every way under the sun. Speaking of which, perhaps a big reason why nearly three quarters of Americans don't believe in man-made global warming is that in the 1970s, the environmental doomsday scenario du jour was global cooling, as this Newsweek article trumpeted in 1975. On the other hand, the president's science advisor's Dr. Strangelove-esque plan to shoot pollution into the upper atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays helps to place this moment from CNN into perspective. Is that the 747 Air Force One I see on the tarmac yeah, getting ready so. to go yep. fly to Iowa for Earth Day? I mean. It's a big, pretty big carbon footprint just to make a speech in front of a, a windmill. Come on, let's yep. park the jumbo jet just for Earth Day. As Deceiver.com noted in a blog post titled, quote, Obama celebrates Earth Day by helping to destroy the Earth, unquote, a 747 such as Air Force One burns about five gallons of fuel per mile. It's 895 miles from Washington to Des Moines, 
So a round trip means the president burned about 8,950 gallons of jet fuel. But still, if the goal is to deliberately seed the upper atmosphere with pollutants, as President Obama's science advisor suggests, then the president wasn't merely burning fuel on Earth Day, he was helping to stop global warming. Or um, cooling, or climate change, or whatever the enviro crisis du jour is. For Silicon Graffiti, I'm Ed Driscoll. Beam me up, Barry. <laughs>